This is Echo 3, and let's discuss some of my recent helicopter research. I have made several tutorials about helicopters before, but I have some new information to share. In this video, I will be demonstrating three designs, a traditional helicopter, a tandem rotor, and a coaxial rotor. And new in this video, I will not be using any reaction wheels. Only aerodynamic controls will be used. We will also look briefly into propeller selection, rotor speed, and blade pitch. The parts used will be from the stock game and the breaking ground DLC. No mods are required, but you will see that I'm using visual mods such as Texture Replacer, Spectra, Scatterer, Parallax, and Environmental Visual Enhancement Redo. For all of these designs, I will be using a Rovemate as the root part, as I found that when I used a structural piece, the game struggled with calculating the center of mass. We are making an electrically powered traditional style helicopter. I like to use these air intakes as they work for lightweight structural pieces. The basic fin is nice as it will help provide yaw stability while the craft is in forward motion. So we're going to go ahead and throw on a couple of those and just make sure that they look nice and are straight. I'm placing a structural piece on the front of the craft. This will just be a place to mount our command chairs so I can put them out a little bit further forward. Nothing very fancy on that. In addition to the basic fins, we're going to add an anti-torque rotor to the back of this aircraft. What I have found is that these things should be mounted as far back and as far up as possible. You do want these above the center of mass. We're also going to add on our main rotor as well, and it should be placed very close to the center of mass of the craft. For the tail rotors, you need propellers that are one quarter or less the size of the main rotor. In order to save fuel or power consumption, reduce the motor size as much as possible. You just want to make sure that the rotors are able to maintain full RPMs. Picking the right propeller blades seems to be from a matter of testing. I can tell you though that between 8 and 9 degrees of deploy angle is when the blades provide the most amount of static thrust. The anti-torque rotor will be assigned yaw control and the main propellers will be assigned pitch and roll control. The air intake on the top is just to make my craft look a little nicer. While this doesn't have to be perfect, I do want my main rotor to be basically in line with the center of mass. I'm going to use a Cal 1000 to control the collective of the main rotor. So I'm going to bind the deployment angle of the blades to the Cal 1000 and I'm going to bind the Cal 1000 to the main throttle. And then I'm going to set the deployment angle of the blades to go from 0 to 8 degrees. And that will let me have a pretty good amount of lift and control for this craft. The grip pads do make nice landing struts for the craft. So I'll be using those on this design and one of my other designs as well. I try to make sure that they are generally in line with the center of the mass, but that's not super critical. Kerbals will affect the mass of the craft, and this is a good idea to check to see how adding kerbals on the craft will affect and shift the center of mass. So that's what I'm doing right now. I also like to bind a translate group to the rotor torque so I can start and stop the rotors pretty evenly. That's what I'm doing here. I'm using translate forward backward for my rotor torque. Before we deploy the craft, I would like you to be able to see how I have everything set up as far as my authority limits and deployment angles and my rotors. I do have the craft set to go from zero to eight degrees of deployment angle on the main propeller blades. It's time for a test flight so we can see how this thing performs. I am going to be flying this thing with a joystick. I have found that it is a lot easier to fly with a joystick than it is with a traditional keyboard controls. Part of that is that helicopters, as they change their altitude and they change their speed, it requires constant adjustments as far as roll and yaw are concerned. And I just it's a lot easier to fly with a joystick and I can fly a lot smoother and easier with it. Not that you can't control with a keyboard, I just find that it is easier to use a joystick in this situation. For our second craft, we're going to be designing a tandem rotor helicopter, and I have learned some new techniques on how to better control this style of craft. I'm going to throw together a pretty simple body for this craft, so this isn't anything you have to worry about replicating or anything. It's just going to be pretty simple just so it's functional as a tandem rotor helicopter. What I have found in my research is that most helicopters run their main blade RPMs around 300 revolutions per minute. So for all of my different designs, I'm going to be using something very similar. The game auto assigns the cyclic and collective controls for the rotor blade but it doesn't do a proper job for tandem rotor helicopters. So I'm going to be using a workaround and these hinges are going to be a part of it. In the past, I tried assigning the hinge rotation directly to control the yaw, but that didn't work very well with how the hinges work. I wasn't able to get them to rotate back exactly how I needed them. So I have a very convoluted way that's going to work. The rotors will be attached directly to the hinges and I'll assign one rotor to be clockwise and the other rotor to be counterclockwise. I'm going to give them around 300, 315 revolutions per minute and I can reduce their size to around 30% or so. These structural pieces attached to the top of the hinge are going to be crucial for controlling yaw. They're going to be a part that I'm going to push against with air brakes. 
We can go ahead and attach the helicopter blades on this. I didn't spend too much time figuring out what was going to be the optimal design, but they are going to get assigned pitch and roll control. I'm going to go ahead and attach the air brakes now. The air brakes are great for this because you can assign them yaw control and they will be recognized by the SAS so the computer can keep the craft stable. Make sure to have the advanced tweakables enabled in the game settings because the air brakes and the structural pieces will need to be set to same vessel interaction, otherwise this won't work. Make sure to assign yaw control to the air brakes, and I'm, right now I'm just adjusting how much control authority they have. I'm going to find out that this is not quite enough, and I'll need to increase that after I deploy the craft. For the front rotor, the air brakes will need to be put on backwards. Try to make sure that the air brakes are placed about the same height and distance as they are on the back ones. That way this will work evenly. This ends up working out really well for us. Say I want to twist the craft to the right. Well, the air brakes will deploy and it will bend the front hinge to the right and the back hinge to the left. And our craft will then twist to the right around the center of mass. I like to rotate the rotors forward about five degrees. It makes forward flight just a little bit easier. And like all my other helicopter tutorials, I'm going to be binding the blade deployment angle to the Cal 1000. The Cal 1000 is going to be bound to the main throttle. I'm going to be setting the deployment angle to go from zero to eight degrees or nine. Either works pretty well. The hinges are powered so they will snap back in place when the air brakes are not pushing against them. Also, like my other designs, I like to bind the rotor torque to a translation control. It makes starting the rotors a little easier, and they will start uniformly. I'm excited to take this out for a test and show you how well this design works. We'll go ahead and turn on our SAS, and then use our translation controls to slowly speed up our rotors. Looks like they are up to speed. I want them running just over 300 RPMs. Now, as we start flying the craft, you can see that my yaw controls are going to be handled by those air brakes, and they're going to tilt those hinges left and right, and that gives me full control over the craft. I did need to up the control authority on the hinges just a little bit, but that was fine, and it looks like they are working really, really well. And you can see the SAS is actually handling the yaw control as well for the craft, so I can fly this thing pretty easily, and we're just going to come in on this helipad for our landing. This method for controlling tandem motor helicopters means that I do not need any reaction wheels to have full yaw, pitch, and roll control over this style of helicopter. This last style of helicopter is going to be a coaxial rotor helicopter. That means I'm going to have two rotors, one on top of the other. This first rotor will use surface attachment onto the structural piece. The second rotor will have its bottom attached to the bottom of the other rotor. That way I can have them perfectly aligned with each other. I use the absolute move tool to make sure that this is placed in the perfect center. I'm going to use a structural piece again for the front of the craft. It'll just make a place to attach the command chairs for our pilots. Like the first craft, I'm going to be using the grip pads for our landing gear on this craft. They work really well. They just have a high impact tolerance. Also like the first craft, I'm going to use this air intake as a structural piece for the back. It's just lightweight and a good piece for attaching things to. We don't need an anti-torque rotor in the back, but it is helpful to have some control surfaces for forward flight. I'm going to let these pieces have yaw, pitch, and roll control. Let's set up the rotors. I'm going to give them around 320 revolutions per minute. That'll work out pretty well. I didn't do as much testing on rotor speed. Exactly how much power the rotor needs depends on how fast it needs to spin, how many propeller blades are on it, what the angle of the propeller blades are, how thick the atmosphere is, and how fast the craft itself is moving. So there's a lot of stuff to consider in your design for your particular craft. I'm going to splurge and use a couple RTGs to power this craft, so we won't have to worry about our power needs for the entire flight. I'm going to angle these rotors about 15 degrees forward. That actually is going to let this craft have yaw, pitch, and and roll control all done by these propeller blades. Try to make sure the rotors are over the center of mass of the craft. I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to take away a propeller blade from each of these rotors so there'll only be five instead of six. You can see my Secrets of Symmetry video for more details on how to do stuff like this. The last thing to do is to set up the action groups and the Cal 1000. This is going to be basically the same as how the previous two crafts were. I am going to increase the deployment angle from eight to nine degrees on the Cal 1000. If you'd like your helicopter to go faster, you may want to set that at a slightly higher number, but between eight and nine degrees is where the maximum amount of static thrust is generated by the propeller blades. Let's take this craft out for a little bit of a test flight. I'm going to show you that this craft is entirely controlled by aerodynamics. And at the end of this flight, I want to show you something kind of special that all helicopters should be capable of doing. I talked about three styles of helicopters in this particular tutorial, but I have two other styles of helicopters that I did not mention. I have a tutorial on how to make an intermeshing rotors helicopter, one of my favorite to make in the game. I also have a tutorial on how to make a compound helicopter. So if you 
want a helicopter that can fly fast, that is probably the style of helicopter that you are going to be interested in. After we gain a little bit of height, I'm going to hopefully show you how to do an auto rotation landing. This is useful if your craft were to run out of electrical power or you to run out of fuel. You can still safely land a helicopter through the remaining momentum of the helicopter blades. I found auto rotation landings to be very difficult if I were to use the fan blades though. They seem to have a lot of drag and they slow down much faster than the other helicopter blades, so I would lose too much momentum on those helicopter blades and would crash. As long as we don't panic, we can have a relatively safe landing with this craft. I am Echo 3 and thanks for joining me on this improved discussion about helicopters. I'll see you next time.